rico pandemonium Use my fangs to murder ya Yo soy la diosa, los demonios no me controlan Soy culera all right, what's up, everyone? This is 7 October's. Um, welcome to Nightmare on Sedgwick Avenue podcast. Uh, this is season five, episode seven. Uh, today we have two, another two dope guests. Uh, I feel like this season has been like the episodes where I have like two people um, in one episode, which is really dope. Um, so I just had Chino Excel with Gift Revolver. And then I had Cochise MC with Architect. And now I have these two ladies that I'm going to be introducing. Um, I ran into their page through Instagram. Um, I wanted to have another aspect of my um, podcast to have more horror stuff, but more like real life stuff, like the paranormal, which I'm into. Um, and I came across their page. It was really dope. Um, their names are Leah and Bethany, and they go by the Paranormal Putas. Uh, really dope name, by the way, and I'll, I'll get to that and ask them that when they get on the screen here. But without further ado, let me get them here on the screen. Hello, ladies. Hey. <laughs> hey, thank you for joining me. Um, and yeah, you guys have a real powerful name <laughs> for those in the Latino community, obviously. But uh, like, where did that name come from? And how did you guys get into the paranormal? Oh, my goodness. I love that <laughs> question so much. And then let me just start by saying thank you so much for asking us to be here. We're super excited to get to chat with you today. Um, yeah. But I'm going to let Bethany answer this because I okay. think she she does such a great job. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> He always does this to me. <laughs> no. Um, well, I mean, the name came about organically. We were just hanging out watching TV and we were joking about starting a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And well, what would we name it? And Leah's really fucking witty and quick. Uh, and she just blurted out paranormal putas. <laughs> and we started laughing, dude. We were just like choking, laughing, <laughs> dry wheezing, like the the whole ordeal. <laughs> And then when it calmed down, we were kind of, we looked at each other and we were like, bro, that's kind of badass. Like, you know? <laughs> so it just like fell into Leah's mind. Uh, but the more we thought about it, the more we realized how perfect it was, you know, because every, it says everything in the name, right? We're going to talk about paranormal stuff. And then putas, we're like crass <laughs> women. We're going to be crazy, silly, funny. We're going to be unapologetically ourselves, you know? Yeah. It's also kind of like chingona, right? Like you're yeah. taking it, you know, like screw screw being called a puta, right? Like, you know what? I'll call myself puta first. So <laughs> you can't you can't touch me. So yeah. <laughs> we we think it's like real like punk rock, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool because you guys gave it like a more like a positive spin, you know, on it. Okay. Uh, and how did you guys get into the paranormal? Like on that on that part, like where did you guys? I know I read from your website that like your your dad and all that stuff um, kind of got you into like with the, uh, him telling his, you his stories and stuff like that. But where did all that come from? For those that haven't heard your story, yeah, definitely. And it's it's our favorite story to tell because it is something that we grew up with um, from very young ages. We've had different paranormal like experiences and. I can go back as early as eight, nine years old when I first started seeing like shadow figures in our home. And so we just grew up in a very haunted environment. And as we yeah. got older, like I don't, and, and it wasn't, it was never weird. It always was just kind of fascinating. Like mm -hmm. I, I never felt scared. I never felt harmed. And still to this day, I've never felt that way. But um, as we got older, we continued to experience these things. And then it kind of just became a joke. Like maybe it's not the house, maybe it's us. <laughs> and like, we're just haunted and something like really important to us in the podcast is, okay, well, why us? Why are we feeling this way? And then it became, well, it's our family. And then we were like, maybe it's just like a Latino thing. And so <laughs> we really focus in on speaking to the Latino community about their paranormal experiences. And it's just been so cool because there's so many parallels and so many stories that we've all heard growing up that I think mm -hmm. have kind of impacted our, our lives. And so many people have experiences and it's just been really cool to kind of be able to have those conversations within our community and share those stories because they're just they're so badass and we're such spiritual people yeah. um, and we have such deep ties to the lands that we're on. Like I can get real deep and like emotional <laughs> and start crying about it, but <laughs> it's been more beautiful, I think, than anything to be able to connect with people and share our experiences. Yeah. yeah I kind of 
want to build on that a little bit because like you mentioned on our site, we talk about our dad. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it goes into like a whole cultural thing, right? Like that yeah. that's how he was raised and that's how we were raised, like telling campfire stories, talking about La Chusa, like all these legends. And it's cool that, you know, we'll meet, you know, other Mexican-Americans, Latinos, Chicanos who have similar stories, you know? And it's just yeah. cool to for our culture in that facet because every culture has their own form of spirituality and their Mm -hmm. own legends and things and it's just it's just so cool to connect with people within your your community you know and then and then just like Mm -hmm. give that information out to the rest of the world who may not be a part of that community that's true yeah because I can say that too like being from like a Mexican-American family too is like we all have that one, like you said, the ghost stories or some sort of paranormal experience. Like my dad talks about when his grandpa like haunted him because he promised him something before he died and he didn't do it. And then my abuelita would like, she's like super Catholic, but she would tell us all these scary stories from her pueblo where she was from. Um, and that kind of grew my fascination too. So I can relate to what you guys are saying. Um, and I like, like I said, like for those listening in, you guys have your podcast where you have people share their personal um, you know, paranormal stories uh, from the Latino community, which is really dope. Um, and you guys are based out of um, Eastside, Texas, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, okay. And so do your guests like are all over like the Latino community from any, any place? Yeah. Yeah. That's, what's been really cool. Cause like if, if you tune in or start listening from the beginning, it's mm-hmm. mostly stories from us. We share our experiences and then we have like our sister come on really close, close family and friends. And then it was like, oh, hey, someone from down the street is saying that they've had same <laughs> type of experiences. So then we have them. And now we have California, which has been huge for us. So many uh, reach outs from California. So we love Cali um, and New Mexico, Mexico, New Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. Um, all over, really. Like, it's just yeah. been so cool. Guatemala, we're hearing stories out of people who have roots in, in Guatemala. And it's just been awesome because... I don't know. The stories are just so rich and that's what we yeah. love so much about, about our culture and, and the stories that we're hearing. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool though, that you guys are doing that. Cause I always had like an idea of like doing something similar like that, where like I would go to like, I don't know, Mexico and like interview just people, the stories that they have, because like you said, like what you guys are doing is really important ba- tying it back to culture because um, some of these stories will die, you know, eventually, like if, if they don't tell it to somebody else. So that story might just never hear any. It will be like on deaf ears. Right. So it's kind of cool that you guys are documenting these stories um, and then, you know, passing it on, which is really cool because like the art of storytelling, I feel like it's kind of like, you know, not not as much prevalent as it used to be, you know. Definitely. Thank you. That means a lot because that's really the focus. And Bethany even says something exactly like that. Like, it's really important for us to document these stories, even Mm -hmm. if we never made the past season one and it was just our family stories. Like, Mm -hmm. that's so important to us because when we were born in East Austin, that was hood. That was good. Like, that was... (laughs) You know, and now it's been so gentrified that we have to drive through many subdivisions. Like, it's just so <laughs> weird, like yeah. little mini malls and breweries and, you know, pop up shops to get to grandma's house when that was not the case yeah. 10, 15, 20 years ago. And so it's it's really important for us to catalog this for that reason. So thanks for saying that. That means a lot. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, because I, I sometimes I was like, I wish I would have had like social media or like recording my phone for my abuelita because all her stories that she told us like, it's just out of memory. But even then, like you lose some of the things when you repeat the story, you know, it's not the same. So that's like I said, gr- great job with what you guys are doing there. Um, and how did you guys um, start getting involved? Because I do see that you guys are also part of like some of the paranormal festivals and stuff like that. And you've guys even been speakers there. Like, how did that happen? Like, and tell us how those experiences have been. Girl, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we have no fucking idea. <laughs> it's like, like where you crashed the party. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, we're just like, what? Like, so I'll, I'll shout out a couple people, I think, for this kind of happenstance, because we've had the honor and privilege to be a part of um, Paranormal Fest in San Antonio, Texas for the past two years. Um, and that's nice. led by Fred and Steven, who are Curious Twins Paranormal on Instagram. So definitely check them out. Mm-hmm. But um, I had a conversation with a woman here in Austin. Her name's TK, and she runs Las Ofrendas. And it's a huge 
market here in Austin. She does an amazing job of highlighting the uh, Latino community, LGBTQ community, and she's just a huge uh, mover here in Austin. Okay. Well, her and I got the opportunity to talk and she mentioned Fred and Steven to me. She was like, they do such a beautiful tour. And all I did was go follow them on Instagram and they followed back. And that was kind of it for a little while. And we were just kind of Instagram supporters. Mm -hmm. And then they messaged us one day and we're just like, hey, we love what y'all are doing. Would y'all be down to be a presenter at Paranormal Fest? And I'm not going to lie. Like, I felt like we were just asked to be like on fucking, I don't know, like some big stick, like a big deal. It's a big deal, you know? Yeah, like, like Sabado Gigante or something. Like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, like it was just so major. I was like, oh my God, because we never thought that anybody really would even listen to us so the yeah. fact <laughs> so the fact that someone who wasn't in our direct bloodline who was mm -hmm. like hey we love we love y'all you know we want to we want to support y'all and it, it's just been really cool and so when we got to meet them and work with them they're just such a good energy and such good people to be around um and they've continued to ask us back and it's just been really cool Um, and because of them, they kind of given us the opportunity to step onto a different platform and really network with some really amazing people in the paranormal community here in Texas. So it's just kind of been a really welcoming family experience. And, and we're very thankful for that. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And when does this happen? Uh, what, uh, what month does it happen? The festival? September? Yeah. Usually yeah. it's September. Um, okay. have, have things come out for this year? Yet? Uh, September 16th. It's usually roughly the week of the 16th. Okay. depending on the people, I guess and how it plays out but yeah September 16th oh that's <clears> cool <throat> I'll have to check it out then because I've never I never even knew about it <laughs> yeah it's, no definite it, it's it's so cool it's really cool for the community and I think uh it, it's opened up the doors for a couple things right like yeah yeah uh we got invited to be a part of a true crime and paranormal podcast oh. festival <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. we'll be we'll be vending out there, which was a cool thing, you know. Again, every time like someone emails us or DMs us, like, "Hey, we want you at this thing," we're like, "Is this a joke? You're being mean. <laughs> <laughs> You're just trolling me." <laughs> it's true. It's true. Anytime, it's it's crazy. So it's cool though. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome. And what what has been one of your favorite like um paranormal paranormal stories that you heard from guests on your show? That's hard. Yeah. There's so many good ones. <laughs> uh, some of my favorites, though, are the ones that kind of like have crossover, you know, like people who have uh, stories about La Chusa. Mm -hmm. Like, I love hearing those because, you know, someone out in California will have a, an experience and then someone here in our town will have an experience and they're so similar, you oh, know, yeah. and I think so cool and then hearing the differences too about like what she looks like or what kind of forms she takes but i don't know i just like hearing the differences and and the similarities in those yeah that's yeah, pretty I, cool what about like your guys's personal experiences like what's been one that's like been the most impactful uh, oh shit well <laughs> the one i i think the one that i referenced the most is Like I kind of mentioned when I was younger, eight or nine years old in our childhood home, um, very basic setup to three bedroom, three bedroom, small little east side home. But it was it was nice. We love it. And we still have it to this day and we love it. But mm -hmm. I remember sitting in our living room and uh, and we were watching Creep Show. And I I, I mentioned this only <laughs> because I was like, I want to kind of build a skepticism here, right? Like maybe I was just freaking out because I was really young watching a horror movie, right? And yeah. we were desensitized at a really young age, which I also think is kind of a major thing in our community as well. <laughs> like yeah. why were our parents totally okay with us watching that's some of true. this horror shit on TV? Like <laughs> that's fine. Um, so <laughs> we're watching Creep Show, and I remember looking over behind me to our kitchen and seeing figures and and I could very well make out I called them a family because just kind of based on their height and their shape like it was a taller and then a little bit shorter and then a smaller so to me it was a man woman and child and I was mm -hmm. like oh there's a family back there but like I I didn't get scared it didn't really like huh I just kind of saw them and I was like all right <laughs> and then went back to watching the movie right and I kind of left it alone but I did continue to see them throughout the home and This is how it happened. I was like, they're coming from the closet in 
this bedroom and I, I know where they're coming from. I see them come out of it. I see them go into it. And I had that experience for a while in that house. And I don't know mm -hmm. if it stopped just because I got older and I just kind of became focused on other things and started ignoring it more. Yeah. Um, but I, I saw figures in the house and that's one of the first and maybe the one major one uh, for me. Cause after that, for me, it's just like sounds here and there or, and even still to this day, I hear stuff or bangings or things in the corner of my eye, that kind of stuff or flash images. And I'm like, all right, something's up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's me. I think Bethany has definitely a little more profound experiences. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had some interesting stuff happen. Um I think, well, how old was I, like 12 or 13 or something, when I saw, I saw an apparition of a little girl in our house mm -hmm. in Round Rock, um, and I talk about that, you know, every now and again, because that was really freaky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's, like, the only, like, major thing I've ever seen, and I feel like it was also because I was kind of young, and I was up really late, you know, mm -hmm. but I had that feeling that someone was watching me, you know, you know that feeling, where, yeah. like, kind of tingles a little bit. <laughs> 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 and I look behind me and she's there, you know, and she's looking at me and she goes into my mom's room. I freak out and go to my room. But what really um, like validated that experience for me was the next day my mom asked me, why did you go into my room last night? You know, and I hadn't told her that I saw this little girl go in there, but she mm. said that she saw she said it was me. She said she saw me peeking into her room. And I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm like, it ran to my room. That's not I was. <laughs> so that was probably the craziest. Um, but like Leah said, I still see and hear things like, you know, I, I had a, a pretty big thing happen to me when I was living with my dad a few years ago and like some stuff went down in that house and mm -hmm. just lots of really weird energy and like, you know, doors flying open and stuff like that. Oh, wow. And I was going to ask, too, that kind of brings to my next question. Like, do you guys think like there's certain people I know you said you mentioned, uh, Leah, that it was like maybe because you were young. But like, do you feel like some people are more like prone to be sensitive, you know, to these things than others? Because like, I don't me myself, I've never had like a paranormal uh, experience. Like, I think the most that I like kind of just brag about is like I saw like a little like duende like when mm -hmm. I went like sixth grade camp but even yeah. then it was just like the shadow of it um yeah. but I, what what are your guys thoughts on why uh some people are more prone to you know having these sightings yeah no that's a great question I'll just say when this blow my mind yeah. like, I'm like, <laughs> right? like oh my god you got to tell us more about yeah. that yeah I know <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy um I love yeah. the little videos and and yeah. learning more about them and yeah uh, uh, so that's really cool that, that you actually saw <laughs> Yeah, like it, like it just kind of ran by, like oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's pretty much like so. Yeah, I, this is the only story I tell because I'm like that's the only paranormal thing I've ever happened to me. But um, it was like a sixth grade camp. So here in, in I'm from San Diego, California. So um, we, in sixth grade we go to camp. And so um, usually it was like the same camp for like most of the people like uh, in the San Diego area. So it's like kind of like up in the mountains in the woods. So you get to go and then they obviously take you hiking in the woods and all that stuff. So it was one day we were like hiking and um, like right across the way there was like a, a log um, that was just on the ground and the sun was pretty high. So it, whatever was on there was like any shadows would like be on the log. You can see it on the log or whatever. Right. So obviously I was like at that time I was about like 11, 10 or 11 or something. So a lot of us are like a little short, but this th figure was a little bit shorter, maybe like three feet tall. And I just saw like something like running, like you could see like the shadow on the log, like running. And I told my friends, I looked to see like maybe it's one of us. Right. But the figure was too short to be any of us because we were like maybe like four feet tall. This thing was like two to three feet tall. And then I look at one of my friends. I'm like, do you see that? And, and they collaborated too. they were uh, corroborated and they were like, yeah, like I see something running. And then I was like, what the heck is that? But like, we never figured out what it was. And I, the only thing I can think of was like, it was a duende because like they live in the woods and it kind of had the little shape of the little, you know, the little head. Um, <laughs> but I was like, I don't know <laughs> what it was. It could have been something else, you know, another creature or something. And then uh, from there, like I kind of grew fascinated with that. And it was crazy because like a few years back, like I think in 2017, we went to Mexico and we took like kind of like a road trip behind um, to get to Mexico City. 
um and there was this town that we ended up in and there was like this big ass like on the freeway they had these big posters like oh uh museo de los duendes and i was like what the hell was, like there's a <laughs> and there's like an actual museum of like duendes and it's pretty cool like it looks like old school and supposedly they've had sightings there too where like they oh. play pranks on like the the horse's tails they'll braid the the, the horse's tail and stuff like that and it was pretty cool because then there's this like little house you go in there and then people can um, retell their stories. And I told my story and it's cool because some people can write them down in like a little like booklet or something. It's pretty cool. That's, that's really cool. cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. We should go. I know. That's yeah, you guys really should cool. go. And it has like they have little duendes too that they've made um, that are there and they have a shop and everything. It's pretty cool. And they have tours too. They take you to like the the woods. We didn't do that, but I was like, next time I need to do that. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, that's badass. Thank yeah. you for sharing. That's yeah. sorry to derail. Oh no, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, we were talking about uh, <laughs> about being sensitive to these energies, right? So, like, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Um, I think really, uh, again, it kind of comes back to the culture. I think I think that um, we could probably trace it back. I would love to spend time to be able to trace back as far as we possibly could yeah, um, and, and really try to pinpoint. But I think that it it's kind of, I don't want to sound harsh, but I think it's ignorant in a way to kind of think that maybe we don't have those types of ties or that kind of running through our veins with the history mm -hmm. and what we, what we think we know and kind of understand. So I think it's just, I think we're just kind of prone to it because it's in our blood. And I think that if we really want to tap into it, um, as a culture that we were probably super powerful. <laughs> like <we're, laughs> That's like, true. I think really like super sensitive to it. Um, I mean, even going back to like Native American ties, like it's definitely in our blood. There's so much mixed within all of us. I, I think having ties to nature and being connected in that sense yeah. just kind of opens you up to it. So I think like any of us can really maybe be that type of sensitive, mm -hmm. but you got to be willing to be open to it and willing to accept it and know when it's good and when it's bad and really also be able to kind of protect yourself in a way from it. Um, so I think it's, I think it's already in us. And, and I've told Bethany, like the more and more that we do this and have these conversations, I feel like something else is being opened and unlocked uh, for me anyway. And I feel like I've become more open to yeah. things and I have become more sensitive and more aware and I, I, I really think the podcast for that too, because again, it's it's always been there. Mm -hmm. I've just haven't really turned it on or I've ignored it for a long time. And now with what we do, we really can't ignore it anymore. So yeah. that's my thoughts on it. I don't know. <laughs> that's how I, I don't know how you feel. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I pretty much agree. I think everyone um, can tap into it. I think you know, I heard somewhere, so, uh, I heard somewhere that everyone has what we call like a superpower, right? Mm -hmm. We just, you know, they're just different, whether you're a healer or someone who can see and talk to spirit or like whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, and sometimes some of us just get so blocked by the societal day-to-day, -day, you know, BS and, uh, and we don't tap into our little superpower. So I, yeah, I think everyone has that capability. We just have to practice it, it focus exactly. it exactly yeah like that that's true um and what are your thoughts on like what actual like you know the paranormal like as far as like ghosts what do you think they are I always like having this conversation like you know what is life after death some people think it's like another re like another realm or like a veal right where they like get got stuck uh what are you guys thoughts on that your theories oh god <laughs> me <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I agree with Bethany a lot and I like how she breaks it down okay <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I like that you brought up different dimensions because that's definitely a possibility. Um, I love the infinite nature of possibility, right? Anything can happen. Anything can can be real. Um, and I also love the idea of science and spirituality being intertwined because you can't have one without the other, you mm -hmm. know? So I think the paranormal is just another science, you know, that uh, it's con like stuff that we don't know what it is really. So we try yeah. to make the excuses or not excuses explanations and theories and you know um trying to figure out what it is so i do i believe in in pretty much all of it because 
it is. So is it le residual energy? Yeah, I think it could be that. Mm -hmm. Is it actual conscious like ghosts, you know, with intelligent responses? Yeah, sure. <laughs> it can totally be that. Like you can haunt some people, you know, yeah. uh, in different dimensions. Absolutely. I totally believe that you can hop or like they can hop different dimensions, you know, and maybe they think they're in their time you know, the, it, it, and we're just like in this weird crossover, you know, yeah. kind of like the movie The Others, right? You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do like that movie, yeah. It's uh, I don't know if I did too great explaining it this time, but that's just kind of how I, you know, feel yeah. about it. No, I, I completely agree. I, I think it could be any of those things. And I'm fascinated by all of those things too. Like, especially mm -hmm. the different like dimensions or like you hear everything's always connected, right? Time, it, it just keeps going past, yeah. perfect, it's all happening at the same time. Yeah. And so I think that makes perfect sense for when, like Bethany said, we have those crossovers, right? Or where the veil gets thin for mm -hmm. whatever reason, was the weather just right? Was it the exact same circumstances, you know, hundreds of years ago that we have this moment where we hear and see this thing you know so i think it's really cool i mean even a i'm a big alien believer like and especially yeah. like now now they're just throwing it out there like yeah yeah aliens are real but like my <laughs> whole life i've always believed because i think again it's kind of silly to think like what are we you know we're yeah. aliens That's what i was gonna say like we're alien to somebody else <laughs> right yeah so it, in in the infinite galaxy and like it blows my mind to think yeah. how trivial this is right and like how small but somebody else is doing it somewhere else. You know, it's happening in different ways all over and we have no idea. And that blows my mind. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I, I feel like it's a science, you know, because again, you brought up this point of like, you know, was it the weather or this certain place and certain time mm -hmm. that got you to this result? You know, I, I think that again, like, you know, there are certain places in the world, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, oh, was that place with the weird gravity thing? It's in like, Michigan or some shit. I don't oh, know. It's kind of on the vortex. Walks. Yeah, it's like yeah. a vortex, oh, right? Yeah. It's like, why is it on that certain point on the world? You know, yeah. so there's got to be something there as far as like globally, like, I don't know, just like access points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. So, yeah, because what is, there's like a quote, right? Something about like energy, because we're all made out of energy, right? So it's like, yeah. it doesn't like just disappear, it, yeah, it, it like transforms created. or something. Yeah, it is not created nor destroyed. Like we've exactly. always been here, we will always be here. Uh, like like Leah said, that hippy dippy shit. Like we are all one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true. Uh, true. Time is not linear. <laughs> That's true. My friend told me that the other day. I was like, oh shit, I didn't even see it that way. <laughs> it's like it's yeah, true. Like, yeah. see, you're gonna trigger me because I'll be like, and that's always been the case, but because like. They don't want us to have our powers. Yeah. <laughs> they say, go to work, go to school, yeah. do all this, mm -hmm. disconnect from nature, disconnect from your true inner and what's going on. And then when you do that, you disconnect from it all, right? And yeah. now we get singular and this is all it is, but there's so much more. And that's why, that's why I really love doing this stuff too, because yeah. getting to talk about it more and more, it's like, Fuck yeah, it's our yeah. way of kind of sticking it to the man too. Like, you, I know there's more and you can't tell me there's not more. No, <laughs> it's, it's true. Is, I wish I had more time to research yeah. and yeah. Um, uh, resources. Yeah. You know, yeah. like good shit's hidden off in some white dude's library. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of money and like skulls and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> in there and they ain't gonna let me in there <laughs> yeah seriously <laughs> yeah because i think you're right about like connecting to your roots because i feel like that's one thing i always bring up like um like in mexico where like there's places that are still you know like indigenous like people still go to the woods or like the jungles like right there like guatemala is probably one of them or honduras i remember like my friend said like my family lives like right by the jungle i was like what the hell uh but <laughs> but it's cool though because like those are where the the main the stories come from and i feel like those uh, people are like more like we're talking about sensitive to those things because they're still, you know, in that land. Um, and that's why, like, one of my things, like, I do want to travel a little bit more. And now that we have, you know, like cameras on our phones, pretty much like document stories, because like I um, I would always go to Mexico like every uh, every year. I haven't gone in a while, but uh, my parents are from Michoacán. So we would go to like Uruapan, which they have like this beautiful like Parque Nacional, like a national park that they have there. And it's like all waterfall, like it looks like kind of like a little like jungle kind of. But um, they have these people that are telling like stories there. Like there's this like 
rock where there's kind of like a hole in it and they call it la rodilla del diablo which is like the what the knee of the of the devil um and there's like a legend with it and like these little kids are telling these stories because their family probably passed it on to them and they know it by memory which is the crazy thing and then you can just obviously tip them like pesos or whatever you want um and then they they also like some of them um just for like money you'll give them like un peso or whatever or you're like throw it in the in the actual like waterfall and then they go and dive and go grab it um, and then obviously they can keep it but i was like damn it's like it's crazy all these different things that you know like our culture like you said is rich with it um and like i said like what you guys are doing is really cool that you guys are documenting that um but yeah that's, awesome. that's really awesome i love that and i think too it's really important for me because we we don't have our ties are they get thin like we're fourth generation austinites i think like we're <laughs> like so we're we're deep rooted texans like right yeah. or like and but it becomes we're kind of desensitized or cut off or like even our parents didn't teach us spanish because in society it was like no you need to understand english and do english yeah like, like you had to assimilate right right you got to assimilate and like i even remember we put out like a little mexico flag one time for a single day while and like my grandma was like you're not from mexico and like and she and but i was like but grandma oh. like it, it's just such a big thing so like i think that's why it's also really important to me because while it's ingrained in us and a part of our culture, like we really weren't immersed into it as much as we should have been. I feel like, you know, yeah. and it's a, how to be an adult and, and feel like I have to go finding it or dig for it or, you know, try to reclaim some of it back because growing up, we really didn't get that at yeah. all. So we never went to Mexico growing up, like none of that. And it's, it's yeah. upsetting now as an adult. Right. But hearing these stories and getting to talk to people within the community, like it makes me feel closer. Um, yeah. And so it's really important on multiple levels. And, and I know that we're not the only ones who feel that way. There's such oh, a, no. yeah. you in the Latino community, if you're not from a certain place or if you don't speak the language, then mm -hmm. you're just not right. And it's, it's hurtful. It's hurtful. Yeah. Because can be mean. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, no, like I, I, I do claim it and I love it and I feel it and, and no one can tell me otherwise. So I think it's really cool to hear like, you know, those stories and I would love to hear more about it and actually witness it and yeah. feel it for myself because I know I'm rooted in it, you know? Exactly. So I cool. yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. And I, 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 to be honest too. Yeah. I remember like that was something that, um, it's something in our culture too, where it's like it's kind of self hatred to other people. Cause I was like, I remember like my grandma was like, Oh, these people don't speak Spanish. And then now as an adult, like I have these conversations, like we just said, where like I have friends that never learned Spanish, but uh, I don't blame their parents either because I was like, Oh, well your parents were probably like, I got picked on because I didn't know English. So now I don't want my kids to go through that. And they're kind of like, they don't realize that like, kind of the damage too that they're doing because they're kind of taking that culture away from you guys. Right. Um, but then again, we can't really blame them either because I was like, they were just trying to do what they thought was good for their yeah. kids. Um, and now, you know, you guys are older and it's cool that you guys are doing, you know, your research and who knows, maybe you guys take a trip to Mexico, you know, and like, you know, like try to get like into your roots and do something out there, you know, that'd be cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. and what's, ha what has been, um, like your favorite part of being part of the, you know, the paranormal community or the spooky community? I mean, just, I mean, meeting people, talking to people, you know, um, everybody, everybody has a story, right? And, mm -hmm. and whenever me and Leah do our, our talk at um, Paranormal Fest, I kind of, I always say like, our show is your show, you mm -hmm. know, like if you want to be on it, we're going to highlight you, you know, and I'm going to do my best to produce something that you're proud to listen to and share with your family because it's, it's your show, you know, it's your time. So I just like to, that we try our best to build community and yeah. Um, that, yeah, we meet really kind, genuine, awesome people. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, and they all got badass stories, so it works. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Um, and um, I also read on your website that um, at the end of every season, you guys do like a major, you know, paranormal uh, investigation, which is really cool. Um, and you guys been to like the Stanley hotel, which I want to go so bad. Um, and like, uh, haunted Hill house. Um, what has been, how, how have those investigations been and what has been your favorite experience? Oh man. Um, they're so fun. they're fun. They're so much fun. They're so much fun. I love them. Um, but I think it's funny. And I like to tell people too, that 
when we started this, like the first words out of my mouth were like, Hey, we're not investigators. Like we yeah. don't, we're not going out looking for this stuff. And like, we kind of mentioned like we've been haunted our whole lives. Like I don't need mm -hmm. any more. <laughs> I got enough. I was like, so we're not going to go looking for this stuff. And it was like, yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Like we, like <laughs> weeks later, days later, it's like, Hey, let's go check out this place. So, um, my, my favorite for sure is the Stanley, I think, because it was the first time that we were just, it was just me and Bethany. We went on a whim. We both had like the same days off. And I was like, hey, you want to stay at the Stanley for like a night? It was literally one <laughs> night. We drove to Colorado. We stayed one night and drove back. Like it was ridiculous. <laughs> but um, I, I had one of my first major outside of home experiences at the Stanley where I we both captured like photo images of some really strange stuff and wow. I remember being in our hotel room and like going through the images and we're in the Stanley looking at our phones <laughs> and we see a ghost like in our picture and oh, it was so surreal I was like oh my god and it was just crazy because we didn't we got put on the fourth floor, which is the most haunted floor in the stand. <laughs> and I was like, it's like a fucking, like, it's a miracle. I was like, <laughs> like, we were given this great night of experiences and it was just so cool. Like something that I'll never forget. It was just a really awesome place. I highly encourage, please find a way to get out there. It's such a beautiful space too. Like you step out and you see the Rocky Mountains, like, it's just gorgeous yeah. out there. And the experience was really, was really cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, and I'm guessing you guys are into horror movies, right? Because you guys mentioned the creep show. <laughs> um, <laughs> what would be, uh, what are some of your favorite, like top five horror movies of all time? Top five. Or 10. <laughs> 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 I know for me, definitely The Exorcist is on there because yeah. nothing me to this day. Nothing scares me as much as that movie. And it was just such a huge pop culture phenomenon. Like it can't be beat. You cannot. Every, but every horror movie comes out that's like, it's better than The Exorcist <laughs> or like <laughs> as good as The Exorcist. <laughs> because, <laughs> like, at the bar. That's you know? true. <laughs> but there's never gonna be one that even comes close you know people I love watching I don't know if you've seen like YouTube videos of people watching that film for the first time and they're like crying oh, no. oh they're, I gotta they're, watch like, those up and crying <laughs> and leaving the the theater like all like I need to go to, to, go to church <laughs> Like that will never happen again. That's so, true. That's like one of the movies I still can't watch by myself, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's funny to me because Bethany, um, I love that movie and I think it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I don't think it's scary. Well, Leah's evil. So. <laughs> no, I, I mean, Maybe you didn't watch it when it first came out because when it first came out, it was like, I don't know. It's something about it. Like the 70s horror is just different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it definitely is. And like Rosemary's Baby is a classic. That that the imagery in that movie is just super tr oh, like, yeah. trippy. Um, but one of my favorites too is also the poltergeist. I think like oh, it's yeah. I love the escalation of that movie and like how it flows and like how it starts with just minor stuff and they're kind of ha ha this is funny and the next thing you know there's fucking bodies in the pool like <laughs> and I'm just like oh. like it's it's such a fun ride I I watch that movie to this day and I have so much fun watching the Vulture guys it's yeah. it's beautiful yeah. sound soundtrack be like when it ends and they push the TV out of the hotel room and it's like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the Native American too, like the story. I think that was the first time yes. I ever heard something like that. You know, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I like that you said Rosemary's Baby because yeah. that one when I was a kid, I didn't really care too much. Like it didn't, it didn't move mm -hmm. fast enough. Like my yeah. shitty little child brain. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as I got older, I was like, damn this movie because like yeah. you have so many levels of horror right you've yeah. got like some satanic shit going on but you've also <laughs> got just the experience of being a woman going on <laughs> yeah and being gaslit by your shitty husband like, 
<laughs> and then she's just like, damn, this is some terrifying shit. Then that happens, you know? Like, that's so that, that's a really good that's one. A good that's one. a good, yeah. yeah. Um, I also love Evil Dead, the Evil Dead oh, yeah. trilogy. Oh, I love that movie. I yeah. can love the whole... all of those. Yeah. Just, they're just so classic. So Again, good. something that can never be remade. I know, they're going to make a new one, but I'm still going to watch it. But <laughs> They're never going to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> So, and for recent years, I really liked Mandy with Nicholas oh, Cage. Oh, I love that movie. That yeah. man, <laughs> man, that movie, everything about it, it's fucking like the pacing, it's hilarious and, and fucked up. Like, yeah. Watch. Yeah. Love I always movie. think it's like so random too how they play like a Mexican song there. They play Cielito Lindo and one of the scenes where he's like going bad shit crazy. And I was like, what? The? That was just so weird. <laughs> and I was like, this is so awesome. The what's his name? The director. Um, he has a really cool name. Yeah, like, it's like Panos or something, or yeah, like Cosmatos or some shit. Yeah, yeah. I was like, that's a cool ass name. Too. <laughs> yeah, Panos Cosmatos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that was like the perfect movie for Nicolas Cage, though, because it was like he oh. could just be crazy. <laughs> That movie was so good. Yeah, I could talk about horror movies all day. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, no, I'm good. That's uh, that's all I talk about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about 70s, you guys remember the Amityville one too? That one oh, creeped oh. me out. That that's another one with the good like. Oh, yeah. The old track. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I. <laughs> I love, I love, I love, love, love the Amityville. And I think it's funny because the remake, while well, definitely nothing compares to the original, I mm -hmm. enjoyed Reverend Ketchum. Mm -hmm. in yeah. The remake. Like that dude was creepy. And yeah. like, it also kind of took me back to Poltergeist 2 with a Quaker nice. oatmeal guy. And <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Like that type of imagery freaks me out. Like the colonial dude. Yeah, the colonial. Dude. I'm like something in my it spirit. Has to do, yeah, with the colonizers. Know. <laughs> I know what you did, and I feel it. Yeah. You know, my senses uh, are tingling. <laughs> I can't trust you. I don't like that. Uh, you got the little hat on. I was because of those movies. I was actually afraid of the Qu Quaker oatmeal guy on the box. Like That's I could funny. not. Yeah, like in the aisle at the HEB, be like. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what your spirit was like. No, I don't fuck with that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I want to shout out one more because I really do love and to this day, Cabin in the Woods was really good for like oh, a recent. Yes. For, like, yes, Cabin in the Woods, that. fun. Uh, it was well written the the way they kind of played on the tropes of horror movies mm -hmm. and the whole, such a bigger purpose like i loved that ending like oh we gotta kill off you know the jock the dumb one the, the you know yeah. to, to the gods so the gods, you know, yeah yeah i just thought that was a really cool concept so cabin in the woods is up there for me too yeah yeah and no, i agree i feel like it, oh they all have a common theme though it all has to do with like indigenous things like somehow it is still like <laughs> right like it was like every time they use us they <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, if you could create your own like horror monster or icon, what would it be? Shit. <laughs> I don't know exactly what it would be, but my, some of my favorite horror that I didn't even actually mention mm -hmm. is, um, horror movies that express, uh, what it's like to be a woman or like the, the female, uh, perspective experience or, yeah experience that's the word I'm looking for the female experience yeah so like shit like ginger snaps and Jennifer's body yes. and like stuff like that you know or or Rosemary's baby yeah. mm -hmm. you know I love stuff like that um so if I had a, a horror movie or or icon or something it would definitely be in that realm where okay. like a woman like something happens to a woman and like unleashes her you know <laughs> feminine I like that darkness <laughs> yeah <laughs> ravages and shit <laughs> you should probably check out i'm i'm, I'm waiting for it to come out because uh, right now this month is the latino film festival in san diego um and they have this one that i've been waiting for it's called west i don't know if you've seen like the previews for it but i think it's called the it translates to the bone woman i think uh but check it out it's like an indie uh mexican horror uh like a mexican it's a female director actually and it's also about the female experience i think that there's this couple that are trying to have um like a baby and she can't have one and then she finally gets pregnant but some sort of like spirit is haunting her or something like that 
Uh, so it sounds really good. So I was like, oh, I got to check it out. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, totally up my alley. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> 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 what about you, Leah? What would, what would be your monster? <laughs> That's just what Bethany said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like ditto. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I uh, no, because I mean, it's a it's a serious topic, and I think that we, yeah. uh, as women, we don't really get represented, and we've never been represented well. And another reason why we like doing what we're doing, and and why it's cool to even see, you know, like even you doing what you're doing, talking horror and hip hop and stuff, like there's Thank not you. enough women doing those things, you know. So mm -hmm. I think it's just really cool, and our stories need to be shared, no matter the realm, right? Yeah, um, important. So I like that answer a lot, and I. Man, I don't know. I, I really couldn't I couldn't come up with anything that that kind of hits the way Bethany made that one hit for me. So yeah. I guess I'm being a woman. Yeah. <laughs> I, I felt that. I felt that. Yeah. It's a horror story in itself. Uh, it's true. That's true. You know? Yeah, it's not always so great. Uh, although I love being a woman. It's a wonderfully yeah. profound experience. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh I just thought of something while you were talking. One, another movie that I love about, you know, horror women, the love witch, fucking fantastic. Oh yeah. Also, uh I feel like it kind of brings us full circle to our name, you know, like just the the mm -hmm. women and um, the experience uh of being in the paranormal community, you know, and like making our way, like not only as women, but as Mexican American women, you know, and you know, me and Leah have had this conversation before that, yeah, there are women in the paranormal on TV and stuff, but they're usually, you know, what's called, like societally acceptable, the the American beauty standard, you know. That's so true. Usually, you know, white, light skinned, blonde, blonde yeah, red, red hair. hair, like, you know, those are all the women I see on the travel channel and stuff. And it's like, I love them. And I'm totally like women support women for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we could use other cultures in there too, you know, uh, African -American. And Mexicans, you know, like yeah. we all need it. Asians, we all need to be up in there, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or when they do use us, it's like, like you said, it's like a beauty standard, right? It's like a, like a specific look yeah. of a Latina. And that's like, well, we have, come on all shapes and sizes, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're uh, not all some high. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, Seriously, <laughs> I would love to be like, yeah, I didn't want to be Thelma. like she's, um, she's top notch. Like, yeah. Dust till dawn, or whatever. What is yes, yeah. from dust till dawn. That's one of my favorites. Like, yeah. Make shit like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love dudes are like, oh, she's so hot. And I'm like, yeah, she is. <laughs> like, just is. Like, yeah. can't. It's just undeniable. I can't deny yeah. it. But we can't That's all true. be dead. Exactly. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of brings it to my next point, too. Um, like what I love about horror that's actually one of the reasons I love horror when I tell people like what do you love horror uh is the final girl right because I feel like these movies this genre gave uh like us women like a limelight like we are the survivors of the movies right so for you guys what are your favorite um final girls or who would you be if you were a final girl oh man I think the two like main ones <laughs> Like I think of Jamie Lee and Halloween, Laurie Strode. Yeah, I think Laurie Strode, and I think Sydney Prescott from the Scream franchise. <laughs> like, and I am bummed that she's not in the in the I next know. one. She was just she was just so badass, and I mm -hmm. think maybe more Sydney over Laurie because she was my generation, right? Exactly. So like, she's in high school in the late nineties, and like it just kind of hit the same type of teen drama versus. Laurie Strode, who's waiting for, you know, Paul to call yeah. or whoever. And <laughs> like, it was just a different Tramer. Yeah. You know, like, it, was, it was just a different, it was a different hit. And Jamie Lee's character, like so badass. Sorry. Ben Tramer. Ben Tramer. Ben Tramer. Ben Tramer. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, damn it. Now we don't look like we know what we're talking about. <laughs> All of the other one's boyfriend. boyfriend. Oh, Paul. <laughs> Sorry, the nerd in me had to. <laughs> uh, so for me, Sydney Prescott. I'll take Sydney. Yeah. I like her a lot. Yeah. The first one that came to my mind was definitely Laurie Strode. You know, that's yeah. like one of the Just first classic. horror movies that I remember watching too. And like, mm -hmm. I was so small, I was laying on my mom's belly. Like, that's how small I was. And I remember watching that damn movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. But I love like... I don't know. There's this book. I forgot what it's called. I need to look it up, but it's about final girls because I have such a, oh, like, yeah. Weird... Yeah. I have such, it's such a weird thing because in horror films, women are like, you can't be sexually active. You can't be, you know, you can't drink. You can't do drugs. You can't have fun. You know, it's always like the virgin who survives, you know, the yeah. goody two shoes. 
but so it's just this weird double standard Mm -hmm. i mean i love yeah the the final girl i fucking i love that it's always a woman who survives you know but then it's like the kind of woman that survives (laughs) well then if you if you actually have that book i think it's called like man women and chainsaws i think if that's the one you're referring to right and yes <laughs> and uh in west craven changed the formula though right because with sydney prescott she was the first to have sex on screen or uh yeah semi sex on screen <laughs> uh, and and then after that like now you get more of those women like where like they don't necessarily need to be a virgin or not yeah. have fun right yeah right which That's is cool awesome. <laughs> yeah yeah it is you know because yeah you're right yeah they had like a or even like uh rosemary's right like she had to be the housewife you know like you know um specific roles that they had to play but now it's like kind of like after Wes Craven he kind of changed the formula which was really cool that he did that yeah 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 yeah. I was saying I was thinking that too about about Sydney yeah so that's me to read this book (laughs) yeah Yeah, whoever's watching read that book yeah I I have it I don't even know I think it might be a first edition because I was trying to get rid of it and then somebody's like is it first edition I'm like Oh shit! I think it is. I'm gonna keep it because I'm like I don't want to. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put it in a fucking glass. I know. <laughs> it's a part of the collection, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, obviously, you guys are siblings, uh, which is really cool because I have a podcast too that I have another one besides this one with my sister. Um, how has that been? Like, how that experience? Uh, you know, working with your sibling. What's like the the ups and downs? Because I know there's like the the good parts, but then there's the times where you know you your personalities can collide. Because I know I'm like that with my sister. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But I think it's something that that we've said in the past, and we're really open about our experience making the podcast because. I think like so many people have interest in either doing it or wanting Mm -hmm. to be a part of it. Like it's not something that's easy for sure. So we Mm want to be open about our experience. Um, But being sisters has been really great because or like our whole lives, it's been really great. Our whole lives being sisters (laughs) together in this, in this way, um, because no matter what happens at the end of the day, she's not going anywhere, you know, like, like it, but it's true. Like our, (laughs) personalities like it doesn't matter and we know each other so well that we mm-hmm. can just tell each other hey today's not a day for us to record because the energy's not right we're yeah. not on the same page I'm mad about something and we'll just say it hey the moon's not right or the stars aren't aligned for us like it's mm-hmm. just not something we can do and I say it all the time because we are so different in so many ways and I'll say well we're the yin mm-hmm. and the yang like and it yeah. works perfectly because of that like yeah. Bethany will have this moment and I'll be able to counter it really well. And I think it, it because we've had our whole lives working on this relationship and it's, it's been rough, you know, sister relationships are hard. We have an older sister as well. And it's, mm-hmm. and we're working on building our relationships to be stronger all the time. And this has really helped us, I think, find a way we communicate a little differently. Right. And, um, yeah. and it's really cool. And like I said, if we get into a fight to the point where it's like, <laughs> Oh, oh, I'll never see you again. You know, we're not in like a, a romantic, like romantic relationship that ruins the show. You know, yeah. or other situations like we're oh, I'm just gonna do it with a friend. My friends pissed me off. I can I'll never talk to that friend again. You know, mm-hmm. I can't cut her out of my life the way I could cut out a boyfriend, a friend, uh, you know, an associate. Like just yeah. get the fuck off. You know, she's here forever. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like we, we got to figure it out. No matter how exactly. bad it might get, sometimes like well, hey. It's a bad time. It's a bad day, but we'll figure it out because we got to do it, you know? Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, no, I I agree with that for sure. And I, I apologize to her a lot because I have lots of, I, <laughs> I, def, I suffer depression. <laughs> like I've, I've got some, some darkness in me. <laughs> 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 then I'll be really fucking low, you know, and then, then I feel bad because I feel like I'm letting her down, you know, but she's always really gracious about it, you know, so it's mm-hmm. always, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but we also, you know, Zodiac signs, I'm Scorpio it's, and she's an Aries, so we work oh, well yeah. together, you know, like we yeah. balance each other for sure. <laughs> But, you know, I get depressed and she gets bossy and that's where we clash. Yeah. <laughs> but I can it's relate. Also, yeah. Uh-huh. But it's also needed, though, you know, yeah. because I get so down and then we need someone to push, you know, and she's definitely the one to be like, get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> And and it's a and you know if I didn't have that I'd probably just be sad on the couch all the time. <laughs> so, thanks. <for> this. 
That's okay. awesome, though. That's cool. Like, that's another thing, you know, that you guys are like, besides being Latinas in the paranormal, you're also like sisters, which is cool, like siblings, you know? And that's another thing about our, our culture is we're really close to family means a lot to us, right? So uh, that's kind of cool how that comes full circle, too. Uh, man, before we get out of here, I, I've had fun with you guys. Uh, but before we get out of here, what kind of legacy do you guys want to leave behind, either creatively or in, or in the paranormal? Oh, man. I feel like we've been talking about it the whole time. You know, like just being uh, a female force in the community, you know, and then especially, you know, a Latina female force or Me Mexican-American female force, you know, um, we're not the cookie cutter mold and definitely not thin and blonde. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just being being unapologetically ourselves, you know, anytime I see someone do that, it's inspiring. So I think that for me is kind of what it is. Wow, ditto. <laughs> she does that a lot to me. <laughs> ditto. <laughs> she just kills it. She says it so well. Like yeah. she, she, she's, she's got the words for sure. I love it. I can write it down and like email it. Oh to yeah, you, she's a good writer. But I, I, I can't get it out the way she does. But I agree. I think it's really important to see this, and that's why it was so exciting when you know to get the opportunity to talk to you. I'm like, yes, yeah. uh, you know, female, Latina, you know, like we're doing it. Like, yeah. it's just been so cool. It's really important to us and, and we love to be a part of it. And that really is what we're trying to do. You know, there's space for all of us. So I think it's exactly. important for us to work together to really help lift each other up and, and do this. Like our stories and our voices need to be heard and whatever we can do to help anybody out to do it. Even like Bethany said, even if it's just having you on the show to share your story so you can show your friends and your family, Hey, my story's out there. Like that's, yeah. that's so important. It's so important. So that's, that's what we're going to always strive to do. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you ladies for being on. I uh, appreciate you guys keep doing what you're doing. Like I said, uh, what you're doing is really important. Um, you know, the art of storytelling and um, hopefully maybe I'll get to meet you guys in person. I need to go to Texas. I've never been, but I will have to, I have to go visit out there. Yes, yes. And I love California. So yeah, I got to yeah. go. I, I gotta go oh, yeah. Back I yeah. You got to come visit San Diego for sure. Let, let me know. Uh, but yeah, anything else you guys want to shout out before we get out of here? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely check us out. Instagram. We're now dropping videos on YouTube. Um, and if you're in the Austin, Texas area, we'll be at true crime paranormal fest we got um also we'll be a part of the psychic and spirit fest out in san antonio coming up so check us out and uh, we appreciate the support yeah, yeah perfect thank you so much everybody for tuning in if you you know like this episode go ahead and subscribe follow paranormal putas and uh, they're here there's their ig um and then yeah just follow the links on their bio uh thank you ladies thank, thank you, you.